yesterday we had made it up through the two special senses that are chemicals, right? So we made it through taste and smell. And those are going to be our chemical senses, meaning that whatever is being used or how it's getting used, is it has to be dissolved in something. So if you remember, for taste, it's dissolved in the saliva in our mouth, okay? And for the smell, it's going to be dissolved as these odorants in the air. And then we're going to have those little receptors. And those rejection pathways, they do get a little bit interesting. And the thing about the smell, if you remember, it has a direct pathway. It doesn't have to go through that thalamus. It doesn't have to synapse, all right? So now we're going to move into our hearing and sight, two special, special senses. And under hearing, the other one that we're going to look at is going to be equilibrium. When we think about hearing, pretty sure you guys think about the ears, okay? So the first thing we're going to start out with, of course, is the anatomy for the ears. When we talk about anatomy of the ear, do you think of anything else besides this right here? Now I do. Now you do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I loved that answer. I love that answer. Well, it's really kind of, you know, if you think about it, we're in stereo. Okay? We're in stereo because we got two ears, one on each side, you can close it, you can flap it, you can move it, and you can hear yourself in stereo. Think about that, that's kind of cool, all right? Now, the anatomy. This outer region, okay, is probably what you think about, this oracle, okay? But the important stuff, we're gonna go down and there. But this outer ear, because we're going to have the outer, middle, inner ear, this outer portion cannot be understated. I think it's really cool, all right? But y'all know, okay, just to give you an example of people who know me and know my weird little idiosyncrasies, I guess you could say, one of the guys he works with at work, his wife, cut her finger and she had to have surgery and I'm sort of like huh what got the picture of it this morning and I was like oh now I see why you had to have the surgery done and he was like I figured you'd like the picture well you know me oh that is so cool and they're not even wanting to look at it you know all the way to the right down here it was pretty cool. Just saying, okay? So y'all know my idiosyncrasies about stuff that's cool, okay? So this outer ear, yes, it is our funnel, okay, for conducting airborne vibrations. What is that? Sound. Sound. Airborne? That's kind of cool. Your textbook is going to get into a lot of information about these sound waves, pitch, frequency, that sort of thing. We don't have that kind of time. Okay? So, we're conducting those airborne vibrations. Because don't you, don't you think that the stuff that we hear is sound? Some of it can be low. Some of it can be high. Some of it can be in between. Some of it can be very grating on your nerves and so forth, okay? So there are these different wavelengths that sound comes at us. Now, we've got a hole in this outer ear. That hole is gonna be our auditory canal. Now, as we look at the structure, the anatomy of this outer ear, 
This, of course, contains a lot of elastic cartilage that's present. It doesn't stop growing just as an A-side, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. <laughs> so as you get older, that's why the ears get bigger, okay, because it doesn't stop growing. And plus the elastic cartilage starts to break down, so they get really floppy. Just say. All right, so there are some other parts, okay, that, that are present. I'm not really interested in you knowing this anatomy. But one of the things that we do want to pay attention to, we have this external acoustic meatus. From our terminology, do you happen to remember what meatus meant? Hole. So therefore, our external auditory meatus, the funnel, okay, the, the little skinny part of the funnel. The other part that the ear is going to have, it's going to have some guard hairs, the hair in the ear, all right? And guess what happens to that the older you get? They get longer. They get longer, <laughs> all right? Now, when we begin to look at the middle ear, the inner ear, middle ear, I like how your textbook has tried to show you through the different colors how they section off outer ear, middle ear, inner ear. For this area, that's representing the outer ear. That's a huge part of it, okay? This outer ear <clears throat> has the ability to make ear wax. The ceruminous glands mixed with some sebaceous glands, we get ear wax, we've got the guard hairs. Do you happen to know the purpose of that ear wax and these guard hairs? Keep stuff out. So that when you're at sleep at night, stuff don't go in your ear. Literally. That's kind of cool. Okay? And then earwax. Any idea what function earwax serves? Collects the dust. We can collect stuff on it. It can actually pick up little dead skin cells and stuff that are sloughing off in the ear. It also helps to keep the outer portion pliable, moist, okay? And really, how many of y'all like to clean your ear with the Q-tips? <laughs> and take it and whoosh, and go, oh, cool. Sort of like Shrek, you know? <laughs> Do y'all remember when he made the candles? out of the earwax, loved that, okay? So, it's really not the best idea, but we all do it, okay? Now, as we move into the middle ear, roughly from about here to roughly about here, what do you begin to notice? A lot more structure, right? We have the three smallest bones in the body located there. Those ear ossicles, okay? The middle ear, we're gonna see, it starts at the tympanic membrane, right here, all right? And it's going to end at something that's going to be termed the round window, a circle. Therefore, giving it the term round, and window's what? Open, and it looks like it's open, okay? That area right there is our middle ear. What's another common name for this right here? Eardrum. Our eardrum, all right? <coughs> Why do you think it might be called the eardrum? Just out of curiosity. Because it beats. <laughs> it, like it, reverberates it, vibrations. The vibrations that are coming in, those stuff on the sand, the air, okay? And then it causes these ear ossicles to move. And
and beat. So it's like an ear drum, like a drum in the ear. Now also, what we're going to find in the middle ear, we're going to begin to see this auditory tube. Now, it's also known as the gustation or the pharyngotympanic, and it's going to be a passageway to our nasopharynx. The good place for ear infections, especially in children. Because when babies are born, until they have some growth on them, a few years, okay, that tube is straight. It's straight in. As we begin to grow, it begins to tilt downward. And it's more difficult for bacteria to enter. So that's a good place for ear infections. The tube helps equalize pressure. This auditory tube helps to equalize pressure. What do I mean by pressure? air pressure outside our body all right last week driving to the Poconos and I'm driving at this particular point all right and you can feel your ascent and I'm sitting there and I'm going you know how you have to do that to equalize you know to make them pop okay He's sitting there, and I'm like, have you had pop your ears once? And he goes, yeah. I said, oh. So I just must be a loud popper, because I've got to, you know, i got to actually move my jaws and stuff. Helps to equalize pressure, all right? Now, these auditory ossicles, the three smallest bones of the body, when we look at this, malleus, incus, stapes. All right, in that order. What do you kind of notice about their connections? They have the connection to the tympanic membrane and they're going to have the connection right here on this loop, this, this part of what looks like getting ready to turn into a snake. So they have a connection to basically this border between the outer and the middle and the border between the middle and the inner. Do you notice that? Okay. What do you see about the nerve? What nerve are we looking at? The stipulocochlear. Now, what do you notice about the nerve? It's termed the stipulocochlear for a reason. Morgan? It's a two binary? We, we fork. Because one part is going to go what's termed the vestibule and the other one to the cochlea. So therefore, vestibulo cochlea. Is that a mixed nerve? Yeah. Um, mixed nerve. Yes. I thought that's yeah. the only nerve that is purely. Or is it purely sensory? Uh huh. I read that last night. Oh, because the fine tuning is going to be done within the cochlea itself. Okay, so it's a sensory. 